Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to explain why placing a dielectric inside a capacitor changes its capacitance. Matter of fact, it increases its capacitance. We'll explain why it does that and we'll show you the mathematics behind it. So first of all, we'll start off with a capacitor that does not have a dielectric. A battery is placed across the capacitor or any sort of voltage source that pushes positive charge onto one side, which then pushes away the excess positive charge on the other side, making the other side of the capacitor negatively charged. So there's an equal amount of positive charge as there is negative charge on the other side of the capacitor, which then sets up an electric field between the plates. And assuming that the distance between them is D, and of course the surface area of the plates is A, we can then say that the capacitance is simply a ratio of how much charge is pushed onto the capacitor plate divided by the potential who does the pushing. Basically a potential difference causes charges to be pushed into one direction which we see is happening here on the capacitor. So what happens now when we place a dielectric in between the plates? We still have the same potential V pushing the charge onto the plate but two things happen. For one thing, more charge seems to be collected on the plates. It depends upon the dielectric. The greater the dielectric constant of the dielectric, the more charge is being pushed onto the plates. The question is why? Well, most dielectric materials, they will have atoms. Of course, all material is made out of atoms. But in this particular case with dielectric, when you place an electric field across the dielectric, it will cause the molecules or atoms within the dielectric to kind of align themselves the best they can along with the electric field. In a lot of cases, the atoms or the molecules will be polar, meaning one side will be more negative than the other side, the other side will be more positive, so the negative end will align itself with where the electric field is coming from and the positive end of the molecule will align itself with where the electric field is going to. Typically the electric field is directed from a positive charge to a negative charge like we see here in the capacitor which means that the, the atoms or the molecules inside the dielectric will try to turn themselves the best they can. They're still connected with the of course the bonds between each other but will kind of turn to some extent line themselves up a little bit which then creates an electric field in the opposite direction. Where's my red pen here? So you end up with an electric field being created in the opposite direction just like I've tried to indicate here in the uh, capacitor that has a dielectric in it. So the electric field caused by the realignment of the atoms or molecules inside the dielectric will to some extent negate the electric field that's across here so that the sum of the two will now be a much lower amount than what you had before. Matter of fact, the new net electric field, E net, across the capacitor will be equal to the original electric field that was there in this case, I'll call it E sub naught, divided by the dielectric constant K. All right, so how do we know that? Well, let's take a look at how we can define this mathematically. The definition of the electric field can be defined in terms of the change in the potential divided by the distance across the gap. So the electric field between any two, any two capacitor plates like that simply can be defined as the, the potential between the plates divided by the distance between the plates. The change in the voltage or the change in potential divided by D. We can then write the equation where V is equal to E times D and of course that's only when E is constant. And when E is not constant, we can write it as a differential equation. We can write it as the change in potential over small change in distance is equal to E times, and maybe instead of D, I can use the, the variable R. So that way I can write it as DR. Otherwise I have to write DD, that doesn't sound good. So I can use X or R or something like that. So you can see that the change in potential is equal to the electric field times a small change in the direction of the electric field. Now in the case of putting a dielectric inside a capacitor, the electric field will be constant. What will it be equal to? Well, think of a, an infinitely large plate with charge distributed on it like this. So that would be kind of the way you want to think of a capacitor plate. Two charges between capacitor plates, the plates look infinite in size because the distance D is usually very small compared to the size of the plates. We could then say that the electric field emanating from that, E, can be written as sigma, which is a charge density, and of course we just want the magnitude of the electric field, divided by epsilon sub naught. 
Now, what happens when we place a dielectric on there? If we now place a dielectric on there, then the electric field through the dielectric, so the electric field with the dielectric will now be equal to the charge density divided by k times epsilon sub naught, or, and of course, again, I want the magnitude of that, is equal to the charge density divided by epsilon, oop, without the sub naught. So epsilon without the sub naught is simply the dielectric constant times epsilon sub naught. All right, now that we have the equation for what the electric field is inside a dielectric, inside a capacitor with a dielectric, we can replace that by that, and we can say that the, the change or the potential difference is equal to E, which is uh, sigma divided by K times epsilon sub naught times the distance D. So we're going to go back now that this is the separation distance between uh, the capacitor plate, so again, let's call that D instead of R. Make it a little bit easier. And also, how do we express the charge density per unit area? That would be the charge on the plate divided by the area. So this could be written as uh, the charge Q times D divided by K epsilon sub naught times A. So that would be the potential difference between the plates if we have a dielectric. If we don't have a dielectric, you can see that that would be equal to that without the K. All right. Now we go ahead and come back over here and we write that the capacitance. So here we can say that the initial capacitance is equal to the initial charge with the initial potential difference. Now since we have the capacitor connected to the same battery as we did before, the final potential difference across the plates is the same as the initial potential difference. The battery will still apply a potential difference of V to the capacitor. So the new C is equal to the new charge divided by the new voltage across, or the potential difference across the plates, which has to be the same as the old potential difference. So we'll get there in just a moment. And so the new Q, well, that would be the Q over here, right there. So we can say that's Q divided by the V, and the V now will be equal to this quantity right there, which is Q times D divided by K epsilon sub naught times the area of the plates. Notice that the Q's cancel out, so this will be 1 over, and then if we rewrite that, we get K times epsilon sub naught times A divided by D. And notice now that the new capacitance is equal to K times epsilon sub naught A divided by D, which is what we had initially. Remember that the capacitance of a capacitor without the dielectric is equal to epsilon sub naught times the area divided by the separation distance. So we can see that the new capacitance is simply going to be the old capacitance times the dielectric constant. And that's caused by the reverse electric field set up by the atoms and molecules inside the dielectric when the electric field is placed uh, over that capacitor. So there's your new capacitance, which is equal to the dielectric constant times the old capacitance. And that's how you figure that out.